Hi everyone, I'm Daniel at QNAP and I'm here to talk about the new QTS 4.4.1. Uh, we recently re released a stable version, so it's no longer in beta, and there's a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. First of all, we have upgraded our Linux kernel to LTS 4.1.4. We have a more advanced uh, storage and backup solution. Uh, we have Haber Backup Sync 3 with data deduplication, for example. I'll get into the rest of this later. We have a more advanced hybrid cloud solution. Uh, hybrid mount and VJ by cloud will allow you to access public cloud storage as if it was local. Also, you could use the NAS as a cache space to accelerate your performance. We also have more advanced multimedia applications like uh, QMagi, which has object and face recognition. QMagi Core is the AI engine QMagi uses, and Multimedia Console allows you to manage your multimedia con content for your different multimedia apps. So first of all, for our Linux kernel, we've upgraded to the newer LTS 4.14. And having a newer uh, Linux kernel allows the NAS to be more secure. It also allows the NAS to improve uh, the way it, it utilizes its uh, bandwidth, uh, its internet bandwidth. And that's because it supports um, TCP BBR. We'll get more into that later. So we have a more advanced uh, storage and backup solution. Uh, hybrid Backup Sync has data deduplication. Um, we now support fiber channel. We support SED self-encrypting uh, SSDs, and you can remove a Q-tier pool now without losing your data. So to compare the new hybrid backup sync uh, to the old hybrid backup sync, um, we now have our QD dupe, which is data deduplication. We support TCP BBR, which allows you to send data faster through the internet. Whereas we used to support eight uh, cloud providers for synchronization and 13 for backup, now we support 25 uh, services uh, for both backup and synchronization. So if you want to um, talk about our, our deduplication technology, it is a block level data deduplication. And so it's not just that duplicate files, it's not just that if you have uh, two copies of the same file that's deduplicated, it's actually, if there's duplicate groups of blocks within a file, those blocks can be deduplicated. And that means even a single file can get smaller. It also means that if you have many similar files, most of the blocks within the different files can be deduplicated. So block level deduplication deduplicates uh, much more effectively than file level deduplication. Now we deduplicate before we send, before we send the backup uh, through the network or internet. And that means the backup happens faster and takes up less bandwidth because you don't have to send as much data. Also, because of our deduplication, uh, our backup with versioning is now much more effective. You can have thousands of versions without taking up huge amounts of space. And that's because if you have uh, many very similar versions of the same file, almost all the blocks between the files can be uh, deduplicated. So in this example, Having one version took 7.59 gigabytes, adding a second version took just a very small amount more. Now our deduplication, uh, the way it works, is through a kind of archiving. So if you want to understand what archiving is, another kind of archiving you might be familiar with is making a zip file. So for example, if you uh, make a zip file, the zip file takes up less space. However, you can't read from a zip file. If you want to read what's on a zip file, you have to extract from the zip file. So it's the same with our deduplication. We archive to a QDFF folder. Now it's a folder, not just a file, but it's a similar principle, whereas it takes up less space. However, if you want to restore the backup, uh, restore from an archive backup, you first have to extract before you can restore. Now this is not a big problem because first of all, the NAS can extract from a QDFF folder, no problem. Also, we've made an extraction tool for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And we did this because uh, let's say the backup, you wanna store the backup on the cloud or on some external drive. Um, if the backup's not on the NAS, you still want to be able to restore your backup. And therefore we made an extraction tool so that your PC can extract from the backup. The extraction tool, I think, is fairly simple. First of all, you choose what version you want to extract from, and then you choose the files and folders you want to extract. So um, having our deduplication before we send the backup through the network and internet already makes the backup happen faster. But to make the backup happen even faster than that, we now support TCP BBR. 
Now, I've already discussed TCP BBR in another um, webinar, so I won't get into too much detail, but basically, it's a, it's a network protocol that allows you to make better use of the internet bandwidth that you have. And because of that, um, the backups through the internet will usually happen faster. This may not help as much on your local area network, but it helps through the internet. And as a general rule of thumb, the more opportunities for packet loss that there are, uh, the more TCP BBR helps. So for example, um, if you wanna send your data a very long distance through the internet, uh, your packets of data that you send have to be forwarded from router to router to router. And every time they're forwarded, it's called a hop, and every hop, there's opportunity for packet loss. So in this example, we sent data from Taiwan to London. And so that's a long distance with a lot of opportunity for packet loss. And in that situation, we saw a four to five times increase when we used TCP BBR. So that's quite significant. Now, if you're sending data a much uh, smaller distance, uh, you may not see the full four to five times increase, but it's still a very helpful feature that I think is very uh, worth using. So because we have this more ad advanced uh, a way of replicating and backing up with deduplication and TCP BBR, you could have a more robust uh, backup solution that's more efficient and more cost effective. For example, you can have all your computers back up to your NAS, your NAS can replicate to another NAS using TCP BBR and deduplication, you can replicate to another server, you can replicate to another cloud at greater speed because of BBR and also because of deduplication, and you pay less money because of deduplication, you don't need to pay for as much cloud storage. So something else that we have done to increase your performance on your local area network is we now support fiber channel. So fiber channel is great, uh, not only because it has a lot of bandwidth, uh, we have fiber channel up to 32 gigabit, but also fiber channel um, does not have to go through as many layers to get data from one device to another. So normally when you use iSCSI, you have to go through the SCSI layer, TCP layer, IP layer, and ethernet. So there's these steps you have to go through. With fiber channel, it can bypass the TCP and IP layers. And what that means is that there's not as many steps you have to go through to get that data from one device to another. Your NAS CPU does not have to work as hard, for example. Um, this could help with latency and just overall just help your CPU not get as bogged down. Um, so for example, uh, we use fiber channel and um, we, 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 the CPU is at 39%. On the other hand, using normal iSCSI, sending even a little bit less data, the CPU is at 56%. So you can see that Fiber Channel uh, helps your NAS not have to work as hard and helps you send data uh, low latency and fast. We support the Addo uh, Fiber Channel cards, uh, and, we, and we have our own Fiber Channel cards, both 32G and 16G cards. We also have our Fiber Channel transceivers, 32G uh, and 16G. So something else we have done to increase uh, performance when you want encryption is we now support self-encrypting SSDs. And you might say, well, haven't you supported encryption uh, for a long time now? And yes, we have. But what's new is we support the SSD handling the encryption itself. So SED SSDs have an encrypted encrypting engine on the ASIC controller that's on the SSD itself. So the SSD itself handles its own encryption so the NAS does not have to handle the encryption. So you don't have to bog down the NAS CPU. The NAS doesn't have to handle it. The SSD handles it itself. And that causes you not to have the performance penalty that you would normally have with encryption. Now we still support our old ways of encrypting. I mean, you can still use the NAS to make an encrypted volume or encrypted uh, a folder. And that still works just fine. It's just that there is some performance penalty when the NAS has to do the encryption. So what's new is now the NAS doesn't have to handle it. The SSD handles it. And that means less stress on the CPU. So in this example, uh, when the NAS handled the encryption, encryption, the CPU is at 65%. But with SCD SSDs, it can be just 36%. Uh, basically, the, the NAS CPU does not have to really work any harder than if you didn't have encryption at all. <coughs> We also compared um, SED uh, hardware encryption to just not having encryption, and the performance was about the same. So that's what SED is about. It's having encryption without the performance penalty. 
So something else that's new is we now uh, can remove a Q-tier pool without losing your data. And you might ask, why am I excited about being able to remove Q-tier? Do I not like the feature or something? Well, actually, I like the feature, but if you can remove a Q-tier pool, that means you can then recreate it with newer, faster, larger capacity SSDs and have a, a higher performance Q-tier. So Q-tier is a great feature that will take your um, hot data and relocate it to SSDs, and it will take your cold data, the data that you don't use as often on average, and relocate it to HDDs. And that means the data that on average you use the most, you benefit from SSD speed. So it's a great feature, and it supports SATA, SAS, M.2, uh, uh, NVMe, uh, or QM2 cards, U.2. And so now that you can remove Q-tier without losing your data, if you in the past set up Q-tier with maybe just some, set, some SATA SSDs, you can now remove that, use some maybe NVMe SSDs, uh, some higher performance SSDs, and then bring the, the feature back with better SSDs and have better performance. So removing a Q-tier pool is pretty simple. Um, you go to, to storage pool management, uh, remove, and then remove SSD tier. You want to check that um, all the, the RAID groups are ready and have enough space. And you want the user to confirm to stop the pool service to start the operation. So something else that we have is now a, a much more advanced hybrid cloud solution. Both hybrid mount and VJBOD cloud allow you to, to access public cloud storage as if it were local. And that means that um, your device, your computers on your network can now um, access public cloud storage through SMB, AFP, NFS, or with VJBI Cloud, uh, your other computers can access through iSCSI. And when your devices on your LAN can access public cloud storage as if or local, the applications on your devices have uh, much better access to that public cloud storage. There's a lot more they can do with it. Um, and also both these features use your NAS as a cache space to increase the performance of public cloud. So first of all, for hybrid mount, you can uh, mount uh, folders from other computers and servers through SMB, FTP, WebDAV, and you can mount public cloud storage. And that's the big deal. If you mount public cloud storage and use your NAS as a cache space, then your other devices on your network can now access that storage through SMB, AFP, NFS, and there's a lot more they can do then. You can then manage your uh, cloud services, uh, both uh, public cloud and also you can manage your uh, other remote devices, uh, all from cache mount. VJBad Cloud is a very similar feature. Um, again, and with VJBad Cloud, uh, you use your NAS as a cache space to accelerate the performance of your public cloud. And uh, VJBad Cloud allows you to use public cloud storage as if it were local, but VJBad Cloud, rather than enabling SMB, NFS, AF, NFS AFP, VJBad Cloud allows the local protocol of iSCSI to be used for public cloud storage. So something you could potentially do with uh, VJBad Cloud is you could make a cloud volume. You could mount that volume on your NAS so that your NAS will use that cloud volume as its storage. And then if the NAS breaks or gets stolen or there's a fire or whatever, you could just mount that cloud volume on another NAS and just get right up and running. So uh, because the NAS is a cache space to accelerate your public cloud uh, performance, you can then save money. Rather than spend more money to get faster internet for faster public cloud access, you can just use the NAS as a cache space. Or you can do both. You can accelerate your internet speed and use the NAS as a cache space to have even more performance. So I, for the last section, I want to talk about our smarter multimedia applications. So QMagi has object and face recognition. And what that means is it's just a lot easier to uh, categorize your photos. Uh, QMagi Core is the AI engine that QMagi uses. And Multimedia Console is the application that allows you to manage your multimedia content for your different multimedia apps. So QMagi will categorize your photos, um, makes it really easy to find things. For example, um, QMagic will just recognize that all these 19 photos are of the same person. All these 11 photos are of the same person. So you don't have to sift through all your, all your photos trying to find all the photos of the same person. Uh, it will just find that for you. And now QMagic does not only uh, have uh, face recognition, but QMagic allows you to classify your photos into many different themes because it can, it can recognize 
many kind of objects, many kinds of objects and themes. So for example, Q magic can categorize by holidays, Halloween, Christmas, New Year's Eve, etc. Um, events like parties, concerts, weddings, scenes like lakes, forests, piers. Uh, there's about 400 different themes uh, you can have with QMagi, so it's really easy to find the photos that you're looking for. Now, the, the reason QMagi is smart enough to do this is because of QMagi Core. QMagi Core is the AI engine that QMagi uses. QMagi Core has a face recognition and subject detection, and it's the AI engine that QMagi uses. QMagi uh, Core supports Intel, AMD, and 64-bit ARM CPUs, um, but you should probably have at least four gigs of RAM. And uh, the last thing I wanna talk about is Multimedia Console. Multimedia Console allows you to uh, just decide what is, manage all your, your, your source folders for your different multimedia apps. So in this example, I can choose these folders uh, as a source for photo station. I can choose different uh, folders for video station, different folders for QMagi, for example. So to kind of summarize uh, this, uh, QMagi can recognize people, things, uh, places, themes. Uh, QMagi Core is the AI engine for QMagi and Multimedia Console allows you to manage your multimedia content for your different multimedia apps. So uh, that is uh, what I want to say today about QTS 4.4.1. Uh, There's a lot that's new, a lot exciting to talk about. I want to say thank you for watching.